Hello, I'm Chris Rockway, and welcome to Randy Blue Live. Yay! 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 Follow us. <laughs> oh my god! Ooh, get down! <laughs> so, Chris Rockway. So, done. What have you been up to lately? Um, what have I been up to? I don't know. The last uh, two months have just flown by for yeah. me. I don't even know what the, what's the date today. Is it February? March 1st? Most people have been discussing that I was in Egypt. You went to Egypt? Yes. I know you went to Egypt. So yeah. that, tell, okay, that's like the hot story. What? Yeah, tell us about it. It was until the next country jumped in line. What? Like, the hot story. <laughs> Still who's, who's the story today? I mean, Libya, but it's been one, you know, every day it's like new, one or two more countries are on the list. Yeah. Anyways, we were in Egypt. Um, we got there on a Monday night. The first protest was that Tuesday morning. So. Basically, our whole vacation was in the midst of everything going on. We were in we were in Cairo. We were two blocks from Tahrir Square, so that's crazy. And yeah. you, you, we put some pictures on our blog. Mm -hmm. So if you go to after the show, go to blueisbeautiful.com, and you can scroll down and see some of those those photos. That must have been. I mean, like, what were you thinking? I I mean, it wasn't bad. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It was just like, just amazing. It was like, it was sort of scary sometimes, but it was sort of not and sort of exciting and you like you kind of are excited for them as it's going on and you're like for rooting for them but at the same time you're like concerned about your own safety necessarily or like the safety of just the general just the whole infrastructure like what you know I mean, how is everything going to hold together and yeah anytime you create like a whole you know like that in a government there's a vacuum for power and you just know you never know who's going to come into the city or the country at that moment i didn't you know i didn't know if there would be huge you know, groups that were already trying to fight for power. So I mean, it's a big whatever. Wow, what's that? that's kind of crazy. Mesopotamia is the thing. Uh, we've got a lot of questions up. already. Chris, uh, Stang says, Chris, did they know you were a porn star? In Egypt? No, no. I don't know how that. Would, I don't know if the gay porn star thing would go over so well in Egypt. Right. I don't even know what their stance on homosexuality is. That would have, that could have been bad all around. Uh, it's not know. good. Yeah. I mean, in the in the in the Arab world, it's it's much worse. To, to yeah. be gay than it is here in America. Like Jamaica. Sure. You don't want to go to Jamaica. Hey, I'm being homo because they just kill you right there. Uh, I don't know nothing much about Jamaica, but... I, I don't know where I got that from. Uh, seriously, the big Kiwi says, I would have cut them if they messed your pretty face. <laughs> I would have cut them. <laughs> Thank you, Kiwi. <laughs> Phoenix says, look at him, Chris. Clenching his legs together like he's a virgin. <laughs> I wasn't expecting <laughs> That is a good comment. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix. Uh, by the way, Phoenix, uh, oh, Shane, Shane's in the room, Shane Fisher, you know Shane Fisher, yeah. uh, but he's, uh, he said the blog posting was excellent. Um, and then, uh, Clint me Shane says arms light. are looking huge. Thanks. Give us a... I haven't been working out like I'd like to, but I'm working on it. You've been running from crowds and stuff. Yeah, that's so. a good workout. The, yeah. yeah it's the running from the fires and T-Ball wants to know if you had a chance to cruise the Nile. I did. Did our, you guys get stuff done before that we all happened? Actually, we really did our whole vacation, really. Like, we were going to stay a lot longer than we left. We left early, but we the, we went got there Monday night. And when we get there, it was 10 o'clock at night. Everything's normal. We had a nice dinner and went to bed. And then the next day, when me and everyone else went out, we went to the museum. And went to the museum normally. We met a guy at the museum that was a guide, and we hired him through the museum with him. And then as we're leaving the museum at, like, 3.30 in the afternoon... All the guards who were like staying with AK 47s, because if you know, guns are legal in Egypt unless you're with the security forces. So they're like pushing you out the gates, so like, get out, get out. And I'm like, oh, are they closing in the middle of the day? It's like three, all right, whatever, it's three in the afternoon, but okay. So we get in our taxi and as we're driving away, we're trying to leave the museum. There's just hordes of police and security forces standing there. And they just, everyone's got this weird sort of vibe going on. And our driver was talking to him in Arabic about getting us through, you know, he says American tourists at the you know, says what hotel we're at. And so they let us go through, and as we go down the Nile, the police are just lined up in right here. I mean, literally, there are half a million police wow. lined up in right here along the mile, Nile, as far as you can see. And we're like, what's going on? I'm like, oh, there's going to be a protest today. Well, what's it about? Oh, it's police. It's about the police holiday. I'm like, there's a police holiday today. Well, it seems that every police in the whole city is on the street. And they're like, yeah, well, there's going to be a protest. That's all anyone knew. And then they had their protest, and we saw it was much bigger than anyone tried to give us an explanation about it. It was, like, a lot bigger than that. And then every day it just got bigger and bigger. But we were still able to uh, 
we still got to go out to the museums and we went out to the pyramids eventually on Friday and did that. And uh, the only time we had any problem was Friday night trying to get back yeah. to Cairo. That was the night it got really crazy because that was the night they had basically won against the police forces and they had driven the police out and the military hadn't come in yet. So that time between you know, between nightfall on Friday night and between sunrise Saturday morning, there was no security in the whole city. Oh my God. So I mean, I, I'm not saying anything bad about Egyptians. I mean, the protesters, you know, their motivations were, you know, more democracy, more, you know, more liberal democracy for themselves. But there's going to be the element of any society that's going to take advantage of a bad situation. Yeah. And Friday night, that was the opportunity. Right. So you saw Friday night just fires and looting that you just you can't imagine. But I mean, it showed the, dis the discrepancy between rich and poor in that country because there were kids coming in from the, the desert, from Giza, coming in on donkeys, loading you know gyro slicers and popcorn machines onto the back of their donkey trailer and trying to take it back out to the desert. So, I mean, some of it was just, was looting like that that you were laughing at, but some of it was older kids too, like setting fires and just, oh, you know, setting buildings on fire and stuff like that, and just, you know, it was pretty crazy. I had this mental image of you just like Rambo, running through the crowd, saving your friends. And Don worries about me. I, that's all. Uh, okay, so, uh, and, and so, and just so you know, I contacted our person that takes care of all the arrangements, and I said a couple days, because I didn't know how much information you guys knew, and I saw the news, and of course, poor Anderson Cooper, thank God they didn't cut his face, because I'd have to go out there, but I said, you got to get him out of there, so, you know. And thank you, Angela, Angela, that works here at Randy Blue, did a lot for me, um, because as you know, we didn't have a phone, internet, text message, nothing, Tuesday morning, everything was gone. And we didn't get the phones back till Saturday morning. So Saturday afternoon, I was able to talk to Angela, and she got us out within about 24 hours. That's which when we got she rocked. She totally rocked. When we got to the airport Sunday, air, that was one of the craziest things. Going to the airport Sunday morning because there was a curfew, and people listened to it at that point because the military had taken control of the city, the whole the whole country. And once the military came in, the police were gone. They respected what the military said, so they said, "Go home, stay off the streets." Because at night, we can't tell who the thugs from the government are and who you are. So we just stay off the streets tonight, and we'll pick up who, who we can. And they said the young kids need to defend their homes and their honor. So Sunday morning when we go to the airport, we went through about six checkpoints. With each kid was each checkpoint was about fifteen to twenty kids on a curb, and they're just hanging out, you know, laughing, cracking jokes. But as we pull up, they all jump up. They're carrying machetes and kitchen knives and like sharpened poles, and they surround your car. But they just they want to know where you're going, who you are, what who you're there to see in their neighborhood. You know, if they approve you, they'll tell you which streets to go, which is safe, what they control. But if they don't approve you, you just have to turn around. That's true. So we went, which was good. I mean, I was, it was, I was good to, see, it was good to see that they were, they were doing that for themselves. It made you feel good for them that they had, they had given themselves the security they needed. But uh, so as we get to the airport, the entire airport had been turned into one giant departure zone. Even the arrival section was a big departure zone. There was just, I mean, li literally, not literally, millions of people just standing at the airport. People that said they've been there for four or five days. Right. So. Oh that's what we'll say. Thank you, Angela, because when we got to the airport, I don't know how we got on the plane and left that afternoon because there were people that were literally had tents pitched inside the airport that you could tell they'd been there for days. I mean, they had their whole little cooking zones and sleeping zones set up, and there was a water and food shortage at the airport. Well, you're Chris Rockway. We, you know, <laughs> they're not going to fuck with Randy Blue. We're going to take care, take care of our people. Uh, okay. So anyways, uh, that's, my, that's that story. So we went to Athens, Greece for a minute, hung out there for a couple days to have a vacation from the vacation, <laughs> and then Depressed. came home. Um, Tian T Titan Texan, I can't read your name. Uh, it would be hot to see Chris fuck Henderson Cooper. I would pay for that video. Sure. <laughs> God. Uh, what is it with you people with your names? Jill2, G-L-G-2. Chris, you're so much more interesting than your porn star massage, pleasing as it is. Speaking of pleasing, take off your shirt. Oh, Hunter, can we at least get Chris to take off shirt? There you go. Fine. And later on, well, later on when you're jacking off, you can moan Anderson Cooper's name. Um, like I have it. <laughs> When's Anderson Cooper going to do a guest spot in my live show? I'm telling you, we got to work on that. Um, so now, have you had any, on a lighter note, have, I'm, not, I'm guessing you didn't have any tail when you were in Egypt. No. Have you had any sexual exploits lately? I, do, I, uh, I should just make up some crazy... You know, this <laughs> giant orgy I had last night. No, I actually haven't. 
Ah. It's actually deprived. Oh, honey. Are you shooting tomorrow? Just need some love and yes. What are you shooting with? It's a surprise. Is it? Mm hmm. Uh, a little bird. A little birdie told me that a certain, uh, a certain well-known porn star has a crush on you. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, Chris, would you hit a front double bicep pose and show those big, beautiful biceps, please? <laughs> front double bicep pose. Fall River guy, I'm amazed. I said that without stuttering. I thought I was gonna fuck that up. Look at that. I'm trying. Are they getting bigger? <laughs> no. Uh, and you know what, I'm calling you out. I gotta tell you guys at home. He came in, he's like, I don't think I look so good. I wish I didn't look this good. I don't, I... God, I, I still think I look wonderful. Texas, oh, Texas, let me tell you. Speaking of crushes, yeah. Texas stud has it for you bad. I'm just saying. Chris, you've been doing the kind of work for a while now, this kind of work for a while now. When you have sex at home, you subconsciously find yourself doing porn angle sex positions. Yes. And trying to find your light. Yes. I, like, I at least try to find my light so I can see what I'm doing. Because I want to look at it. So I got to have, you know, I'll always be doing something like this. I'll be like, I'll just scoot them a little bit. Just so I can like see the ass right there. So I can get a nice shot. <laughs> That's awesome. I Remember do you that like porn dialogue? And, oh, I've, been, and, I've, yeah. and, I've, and I've started to record sex in the last six months. Really? Yeah, just for fun. I just set up, and I won't tell anyone. Just kind of set it up there. And then you watch You it know now, it. but I do. I just set up a little camera over here, and then we fuck, and then I watch it later. How strange life imitates art. Because that's what you did in text, lies, and video. Yes. See, now i got to start writing scripts that make you want to, like... It's probably Inception. You guys probably have any <laughs> idea. I'm going to start writing scripts to make you do stuff I want to see. Then just start doing it at home. Uh, Chris, do you, have been with, do you have sex with Ben off camera regularly? I don't have regular sex, period. I'm like, you guys don't believe me. I... I don't get, I'm deprived. I'm not right. kidding. I need some loving. All right, we're taking bids. <laughs> That's what we need to have. We need to have a 